Hey, this is YBR with Beam and G Drive, and today we're going to be taking a look at a mod called the Aris Calcol. And there are 12 versions of the vehicle available. We're going to be starting off with the one called the 1968 base model, because I always think it's best to start off with the base version of the car, and then you go to the crazier ones. And this one, it doesn't match the thumbnail. The thumbnail is blue, but this one's orange, and I am totally okay with that, because you guys all know I love me an orange car. I think this thing looks great in orange. You even got orange on the wheels. It looks awesome! And I think those silver parts actually hubcaps, so look for those to fall off eventually. Anyways, let's drive this thing a little bit. We're going to get it up to speed, and then uh, when I see something cool to crash into, we'll crash into it. Going to go about 100 miles per hour through here almost. Uh, well, no, maybe not. I don't got the guts to do 100. We'll do 80s. Like 85, I could do that, no problem. 100, uh, maybe not. Oh, there goes a hubcap. It just flew off. I hope you guys saw that. I said watch out for those hubcaps. They're going to fly. And uh, they did just that, just like I said it would. Did I slow down enough for this corner? Nope, we're going into the ditch. There goes another hubcap or two. Do I have any hubcaps left? I got my rear one still. And now let's not hit the tree yet. Not yet, not yet. No, we're not hitting the tree yet. We will soon. Because uh, I'm starting to get pull where the car won't drive straight anymore. I probably should have hit that tree, but I didn't like the angle I was coming at. So I'm like, hold on, this car got enough life in it for one more attempt, right? Let's see here. What's a good thing to crash into? Ooh, right up the mountain and then fly into the tree. Yes! I caught that little bump mountain. You guys knew what I meant. And uh, this thing is no longer driving because it says main engine broken. There is a little weird, unusual spike right there. But aside from that, everything else about the collision looks all right. So let's go ahead and reset this thing. And before we do any driving, I want to give you guys a quick look at the vehicle when it's not destroyed. So when I look at this, I think Plymouth Roadrunner. There are some visual differences, but there are a lot of visual similarities. You guys out there could tell me what you think this vehicle most looks like. Now we can go ahead and pop into the inside as well and you see what the inside looks like. And the inside is not just the bar still kind of fit into this chassis. It has a completely different look in here. And all the stuff here seems to work as you would expect. So the steering wheel, the pedals, and then the gauges, those all work. The gauges even light up and you can see the headlights light up as well. The only thing that looks a little bit off to me is the fact that the shifter lever is just kind of sitting there in the wood. Otherwise, it's a really nice looking interior in here. You can even look behind you a little bit. And there is very little leg room for the children. Hopefully they have small legs. So let's go ahead and pop out of this vehicle, and I have no idea where we are really, so let's just reset it as well. So let's do a little bit more driving with the stock version before we go to the next version. And one thing that's nice about the stock version is it actually has enough power to do a donut in the dirt. If you wanted to do one of those really bad as you're seeing right here, you can probably do it on the paved road as well, but it works really easy on the dirt. Paved road, you might have to put some effort into it. Now let's try to get this thing out of the dirt and onto the paved road. That was easy enough, and we're going to go to the left this time since we went to the right last time. And now we're out here with the full acceleration of the vehicle. It's not great acceleration, but it is a car from the 1960s, and it's the base model. If you want acceleration, there are versions with acceleration. We'll be getting to those later on. But first off, we're going to fly right into the river. Boop! And drowned. Kind of take a look at the damage. It's that same piece doing a little bit of a spike, but everything else still looks all right. Anyways, we'll reset it. And now we're going to go to another version of the car. We're going to be driving the 1968 Roadrunner, which looks... Nearly identical to the vehicle I was just driving, but it has a much better suspension setup and a more powerful engine. That's so powerful it's hard not to do a donut in the dirt when you're flooring it like I was right there. I'm actually surprised I didn't start just spinning out right there. Let's uh, stay calm until we get to the paved road. Now we can floor it. How fast can we go? Can we get this thing up to like 80 miles per hour through here? Oh, it's going to be hard. 80, and now we got to slam on these brakes as hard as we can without losing control of the vehicle. No ABS in this thing, so you don't want to slam on them too hard, otherwise they'll lock up. Then we're going to go over here to the left side and try not to damage it. Try not to damage it. Oh, I think I might have scratched the paint right there. I wish Beam and G had that ability, but it felt like I would have scratched the paint from doing that. And to me, this car is as good as dead after the paint is scratched. So, time to take it out. We're going to go as fast as we can, which will be 80 miles per hour once again. Actually, well, maybe 90 through here. And then some slow-mo into this thing and fly into that tree right there. We're going to fly into it perfectly. We'll do 16 times slow-mo because we're going so fast. And a nice splat on the roof. And the front is falling off. <laughs> okay, we still got one fender left. And the end is still attached. I'm pretty sure since this is based on the bar store, though, you could actually disconnect the whole front of the car with the correct impact. That one was not the correct one, but it was a really violent one. That uh, ripped off most of the front. There's a little bit of the front left, but most of it was ripped off. So let's pull this thing back up to the road, and then we'll drive it for a little bit more. There we go. We even have a choice of direction. Do I want to go left or right? We're going left because we can go faster if we go left. Although I almost just tipped over right there. Now I actually want 
the front of this thing to fall off. So we're going to go really, really fast. And then when we crash, you want to kind of crash the side of the car so the whole front just still has momentum and it flies off ahead of me. That's the goal. Let's see if we can actually pull it off. We're going fast enough, I think. 115 should be good for making the front fall off. And now we just got to hit a tree correctly. We're up on two wheels. Did the front fall off? Yes. <laughs> see, that's what I mean. The front fell off. Perfect. And now that I did what I wanted to do, let's go ahead and swap to another version of the car. This time we're going to go with the 1969 Sports Satellite, which again is pretty similar to the one we were just driving. Except this one only has the engine upgrades. It does not have the suspension upgrades and it has a more menacing hood, even though it has the exact same engine as the one we were just driving, which is kind of funny. So let's go ahead and drive this thing around a little bit without crashing, hopefully. I mean, who would want this? Who would want the bigger engine without the suspension upgrades? I wouldn't, but I know there are a lot of people out there who would. Me, I'm all about the handling, man. I'd rather have it the other way around. Give me just the suspension upgrades and give me the stock engine. I don't care. Oh my goodness. This thing is scary to drive, though. Like, when you get up to speed and try to go around corners like I'm doing right here, it feels like you can lose control super easily. But it's, uh, going 100 miles per hour, at least. I mean, it shows. Big engine does do its job until you get to the corners and almost poop your pants because of how scary this thing is to go around the corners. Please don't crash for me. Ah, uh, we're good. I got control over the awful suspension, just barely. Like, it's on the edge of my control. All right, let's go ahead and just wreck this thing. I see a nice little opening right here to fly into and fly into a tree. That was beautiful. I wrapped myself perfectly around the tree and did a little twill to finish things off. That was amazing. And got pieces hanging in every direction. It's a little bit hard to see them. I want to teleport this thing, but I'm pretty sure it's going to repair it when I teleport it. But uh, let's see if we can get a better view or not. Awesome. Now you can really see just how mangled that thing was. And uh, the engine is completely broken, so we'll reset the car. And I want to go the other way still a little bit more, so I'll just do a quick 180 and try not to spin out. Oh, no, my windshield broke. I can't see. Can you actually see too well in here? Ah, you can see good enough. I like how this thing you can see the scoop. Like, it makes you feel like you're driving a more powerful car, even though it's pretty much the same. It just handles worse. Anyway, let's go back to the outside camera and let's see how fast can we go in a straight line before there's something in the way. Looks like it's going to be about 105 miles an hour. I know I could probably try to steer right there, but I didn't trust that car to do it at those speeds. So I decided just to crash it there and now we watch the tire bouncing all over the place. Bye bye tire. I hope you enjoyed being part of my car. And he runs away like, screw you, you crashed. I'm sorry, tire. Anyways, on to the next version, which is going to be the... Twiggle bird and that's one of those names. I got read it twice because I don't know what in the world a twiggle bird is But I do know this would basically be the Plymouth Superbird of the vehicle and the Superbird was a special version of the Roadrunner back in the day That was made basically because stock car racing existed It had the best engine available at the time and then it had the best aerodynamic technology at the time So it had a really pointy front and then a big old wing at the back just like this one so this one has a bigger engine than any of the ones we've driven so far, and it has a better suspension setup. It's really stiff, but it allows you to go around corners really good unless you get up on the two wheels. If you start to get this thing up on the two wheels, it can get a little bit sketchy, and I'll try to demonstrate that in a second. But on this perfectly flat area, it's hard to get a car up on the two wheels. We need a little bit of a bump to work with. Like right here, maybe we can kind of just go on the inside. Nope, there's no bump there. All right, how about up here? Can we go on the inside? There we go. I mean, you see just how easy it... Oh my goodness! <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was talking about. If you ended up on two wheels, boing, boing, up, I'm upside down. What just happened? <laughs> Anyways, we'll keep driving this thing a little bit more because I do like driving it as long as I don't tip it over. And you'll also notice in the top right corner of the screen, there's a thing that says nitrous and B. So yes, this thing is equipped with nitrous that you can activate with B. It doesn't do too much on this vehicle, but you can feel it in a direct comparison. So why don't we do a direct comparison? We'll get this thing to come to a stop and, uh... See if this looks straight enough for a drag race. That looks like it'll work good enough. So one car goes there. And we'll spawn up an identical one right next to it. So we're going to go Eris and then the Twingle Bird. Parking brake on. And then we're going to go ahead and freeze physics. Accelerate. And then accelerate. And then we're going to unfreeze physics and hold nitrous on the car where you're currently on. And you can see it just takes off much faster. We used 12% of the nitrous right there. We actually over revved the engine a little bit. But... We're significantly ahead of that vehicle, and we're going about 20 miles per hour faster before it slammed into that tree. And then I slammed into these trees because I was watching them slam into a tree. But uh, that right there just proves to you that the nitrous really does help quite a bit. 
Except it sometimes over revs the engine as you were seeing though. Like if you use it like right when you're near a red line, the engine kind of just over revs a little bit and you can damage the engine by doing that. So you got to be careful when you use the nitrous. And uh, whoa, 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 whoa. come on, steer for me. Now, this is a race car. Well, it was made to be a race car. Let's race some without destroying it for like 30 seconds straight. That's an easy goal, right? I mean, we've already done like 10 of those 30 seconds. Although the bumpy roads here are not the best for it because of how stiff the suspension is. Like right there, when you start to do that, it gets scary with this thing because you can't steer when you're bouncing because you know you'll tip over. So you're just like, please have nothing in my way right now as I'm bouncing and bouncing and bouncing. And I think that's about 30 seconds of good driving. I see the back end starting to tip on me just a tad so I had to let go of the steering. But I like the way it drives. I really do. I'm sure if you were to measure how comfortable it is to drive the car, the answer would be abysmal. The suspension is spine shattering, but it makes it handle good. And for somebody like me, that's all I care about. Yeah, I have to get a new spine every couple of days, but man, does it handle good. And we're going to go right into a light pole probably here. It's 110 miles per hour and perfect right into a light pole. And wow, that thing, uh, I think it's a little bit less aerodynamic now thanks to my collision. Just a bit. And while we are on the topic of nitrous, we should take a look at the one called I Need Nas, which is like a name brand thing for nitrous. And this is kind of funny. If you floor it and use the nitrous at the same time right from the start, like so, the engine will blow up completely. Like the engine is just dead because you over revved it so hard. So uh, we're going to try not to do that this time. We're just going to go through the gears. Nice and simple. Second gear, third gear, fourth gear, fifth gear, sixth gear. Seventh gear? And now you're probably thinking, YBR, how many gears does this car have? You're in eighth gear now. Well, it has ten gears. So I would just call this the Fast and the Furious Special. So you can roll through the gears and have unlimited nitrous to go as fast as possible. I think the most surprising thing is, though, you can actually go and buy a car with ten gears in the transmission right now. You can go buy an F-150 that has ten of them. So anyways, nitrous, max speed ahead until we crash into something. Oh my goodness, we're going fast and bouncing all over the place. Oh, we go to the tires good take it no more like this too fast i can't do it ybr they exploded on me and if you thought this would be the most absurd vehicle in the mod you would be wrong because there's a drag version that's even more absurd so we're gonna spawn this up and you take a look at it from the back it doesn't look too absurd it looks like a normal drag car with pretty big tires on the back then you get to the front what in the world is this it has literally six superchargers strapped to it and it makes thousands of horsepower so we're just gonna floor it for a second so you can see how fast this is we're gonna floor it until we crash basically so go popping into the air actually right there and then once it gets traction it, it just takes off like a rocket ship until it obliterates itself to pieces because it can't steer at all but for those three seconds of acceleration it is amazing and if that's not fast enough for you well guess what we weren't even using the nitrous it has right there so what I want to do is I want to test this thing out on a place where you can actually see just how fast it is. So to do that, we're just going to go to Grid Small Pure real quickly. We're going to spawn up the exact same car we were just driving, and then we're going to spawn a normal drag car next to it. And then we'll spawn up a third car, which is going to be the car they chase. Because with drag cars, you kind of have to launch them a little bit, and it's hard to launch two cars at the same time. So I'm going to let the AI manage all of that, and I will just be watching after I get everything set up. So we're just going to clone that drag car, and then we're going to drive it forward a bit. We want to make sure it's centered between those two cars as good as I can. So probably like trying to stay in between these two lines should work. So we are lined up and we're just going to floor it for a little bit. So we get some distance between us and make sure we're going pretty straight. Okay. That looks good. We're going to freeze physics here. Go to the AI menu, say chase me. And then let's just watch what the AI does. So here we go. And that one's popping up into the air a little bit. So a bad launch, but then the power comes in and it just goes by the other uh, drag car. Like it's not even moving. It's up to 300 miles per hour. And it's gaining on the other one so fast, it actually caught it. And right there, it looked like it wasn't even moving, right? It was still going 90 miles per hour. Oh, hey, there's the other drag car finally catching up. Why are you so slow, man? And the AI is trying to stop this thing and turn it around. It does not steer well. I should mention that now. This is not the kind of car you want to steer. The AI really has no idea what's going on. Like, wait, why can't I steer? I just keep popping wheelies. And I love... How the wheelies of this thing it literally goes in the air it's not even just a wheelie it's up in the air let me demonstrate what i mean by this so we're gonna say ai you did a good job now you can just kind of uh calm down so stop 
And then here we go. We're going to just floor it from right here using the nitrous. I mean, we don't even need to use nitrous. We're not going to use it. So here we go. Flooring it with four times slow-mo. Boom. 340 PSI boost. And it's completely in the air. The wheels are not touching the ground. It's that fast. It almost feels like it wants to flip over completely right there. And really, you can see the deformation of that drag tire trying to put down the massive amount of power this thing makes as it bounces all over the place. And that's why you can't just floor it and hope it goes in a straight line because, well, it doesn't. Anyways, that's all I wanted to do at Grid Map. So now we can go ahead and head back to a pretty normal map like Small Island, USA. And there is a normal drag version of the car as well, but compared to the other one, it just feels slow. Yeah, it's faster than any car I'll probably ever drive in my life, but the other one was even faster. This one's basically equivalent to the drag bar still, but doesn't have the safety features. It has no roll cage and it has no wheelie bar. Although the roof looks like it's a soft top, it's actually a Landau roof, so it just looks like one. I mean, I did some testing earlier and it seemed to be pretty much the same as a regular looking version of the car. And uh, we're gonna try to drive this thing on roads that are curvy which is dumb because this is not a car for this but we're gonna try it anyways which means we're just right in the dirt doesn't even matter though because we can drive straight through those bushes when we get to the trees though that's where things get scary all right we're lined up ready for takeoff three two one launch you can't steer when your wheels are in the air fuel tank ruptured and we're flying into the water and then it goes boop into the water and it's dead so we bring it back and then we're gonna go to another version of the car and yeah, that was a quick one Next is the 1970 GTX. And this is the 1970 version of the vehicle, so it has a couple of visual differences. The taillights look different. Then it has that extra scoop on the rear. It has the Landau roof. And then it has the option to have those louvers on the rear. And then it has the option to have six pack on the hood of the car. And it looks pretty cool right there on that scoop. So anyways, let's go ahead and get to driving this thing. Now, this is kind of like an improved version of the Roadrunner you saw earlier. So, you know, they got two years. They're going to make it better. They get a little bit bigger engine and a little bit better suspension set up in the more current body style for that year. And uh, we're going to drive it around just a little bit until we lose control and crash, which will happen oh, before I know it. You know, I'll blink and it's like, oh, my car's upside down. How'd that happen? I mean, it's not as bad as the Tribble Bird. That's what it was called, right? Like, going through the bumpy terrain, it can actually handle itself. It'll slide a little bit, but it's not going to flip over like the other one did. So this one's definitely more streetable. And now that you know how it drives, let's crash it into a tree. There's a good tree. Well, wasn't that fast of a crash, but it's a nice, realistic, and reasonable crash. And it looks like it did pretty well. Next up, we're going to be taking a look at a version called the Y with three Ys, which is a really strange car that is definitely not stock. So taking a look at this thing. Rear suspension, really low. Front suspension, really high. Plexiglass hood and a really pink car. Also, that front suspension, there's some other things wrong with it too. Like it has really awkward camber and when you steer it, the whole car kind of just jiggles a little bit and you can actually get the car dancing by doing that. It's almost like it has hydraulics, but it doesn't. You're just jiggling the car about. And uh, it looks even more awkward when you're actually driving and steering at the same time. So let me just do this real quick. We're going to accelerate and then steer and then look what the tires are doing here. Like that thing, how is it even steering? It looks like it's broken. It looks like the tire is broken, but then if you straighten it out, oh, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It, it's actually okay. It just looks like it's broken whenever you try to steer. So that's just the way it is. Why? Nobody knows. That's, that's why it's a why with three whys. Anyways, we're going to accelerate this thing. And then for another bit of fun, we're going to stop on the brakes and then check out what the suspension does there. It just is like, oh, bottoming out on those. What is going on? Oh, I can't actually see where I'm going, but you can see just... The suspension doesn't know what to do. It is so ruined. This is my first suspension setup and it's awful. Like you just put all the sliders to random directions and this is what you'd get probably. And it's hilarious to drive a car like this, but I'm glad like it's just a part of the mod. Like, they, oh, <laughs> they just like, they just bow leg out. Look, just driving along all nice and normal. It looks okay-ish. And then, oh, the tire. Where is that? All right, let's try to actually drive this thing. How does it handle? That's a good question. Because I've been so distracted by what it looks like. I don't actually... Well, I mean, it's not as bad as I expected. I expected to just kind of plow forward, but it actually does go around the corners. It's super bouncy and hard to control, though. Why would you ever want to race this thing? I don't know. It's better just to laugh at it. Like, you see that back end just bouncing all over the place? Ooh, try not to crash. All right, we're going to floor this thing and destroy it because this thing is an abomination. I see a good jump right here. Let it fly. I bet the suspension is actually going to be good for landing, right? 
Oh, yeah, that front suspension is perfectly intact. Ha! That's why! That right there is why the Y exists. So you could do a jump like that and I... Well, actually, I couldn't tell you if the suspension was ruined or not because it looks like it was ruined from the start. I guess it's okay. I don't know. It's probably worse off than it was. It still drives, though, so we'll uh, go do another uh, roll with it. There we go. That one's going to stay upside down, isn't it? Hey, look! Magical antenna! <laughs> I don't know what that's actually from. Maybe it's a part of the trim? It could have just been a part of the trim right there. Anyways, keep accelerating! How fast can we get this thing up to? We can get it up to 60, right? Yeah, it can get up to 60 still. That's impressive. Can it climb up a wall? Nope. Not like that, at least. Not like that. That was a poor attempt at that. Anyways, the next versions of the car are kind of specific, so I'm going to go to a map that matches them well, like Baja Rama. And there are actually two cars for this map, but they have the same name, basically. There's Baja and Baja 2. We're going to start off with the normal Baja, which is more of a normal Baja vehicle. And then we're going to go to the other one, which is just kind of unusual. It's like, why would you do this? I don't really know, but it's interesting. So anyways, this one, we're just going to drive it around a little bit, see if we can get some air with it, and see how well it holds up. It's got nice... Big old tires and a pretty good suspension setup for it to be able to get some grip through here. And going through that bumpy section, it didn't have any problems. It just cruised right over it. You do have to watch out for the big bumps or, well, they're more jumps than big bumps. You got to watch out for them because you can't just floor it at those. It'll wreck itself. So you want to be careful. Like right here, we're going to slow it down like 30, 35. And just kind of go over it like so. I mean, if you try to go too fast, you'll just have a bad time. Like right here, we'll try flooring it. But I don't even think we're going to go that fast because we're sliding. So there we go, going a little bit faster, and we just kind of flew off the road. It's not great if you go too fast. Anyways, we're going to just fly off the edge right here because I want to go to the Baja 2. Because the Baja 2 is pretty interesting. Oh, there go my hubcaps. So I think we'll uh, just park it right here as we pull up the number 2. Which has kind of a weird thumbnail because it's so zoomed out like that. I don't know why that is, but there we go. So on this one, it has pretty much the same suspension setup. But then the engine is different. It has an Abishu inline six engine with a supercharger on it and it revs to 11,000. And it kind of sounds interesting when it gets to those high RPMs. So I want you guys to be able to hear that. So uh, I'll just be quiet so you can hopefully hear it. Hopefully that got you guys a good listen to the engine as I accidentally roll it over right there. And then for extra fun. <laughs> I spun the tires so hard, the hubcaps flew off. Oh, that's ridiculous. All right. So to finish things off, let's just go ahead and head over to Leap of Death. And we want to go to the top. And we want to be able to go off this jump as fast as possible. That means it's time for the six supercharger version. So we'll spawn this thing up and then be careful for that bump at the start. And then we go ahead and floor it and try to get as much speed as possible, even using the nitrous a little bit. I don't know if it really helped because I think I was traction limited more than anything right there. But we flew quite a distance. We are going to get down this thing at a very good rate of speed. Maybe it'll be a two-crash collision. I don't know. It's kind of going straight down the way it flew. So it might be a multi-crash after all. Let's see. Crash number one. We'll get lots of slow-mo. Because this thing is going to disintegrate right here. It doesn't have anything to really hold it together. So smoosh. And yep, that's what I would consider vehicle disintegration. And we'll let it just go the rest of the way in full speed now. It's on fire too. Why not? The engine is trying to escape the grasp of the rest of the vehicle, but it looks like the driveline was just holding it in. Now you can't really tell because it just crunched itself worse. Anyways, I think uh, that will do it for this video. Till next time, this has been YBR. I'll see ya.